Hi there everybody, it's Halsey from Slim and Stylish and I'm a UK Stamping Up Independent Demonstrator. Today's card is this one, which I did for a design team last week, which was on the Emboss Resist Challenge. And I love it, it's for the Stamping for All group, so go over and have a look at what everybody's done, or you can look at my blog and there's a picture of everybody's posts that they did for this technique. I used three different stamp sets for this. So I used the Happy Birthday Gorgeous stamp set and use these flowers. I use the beautiful bouquet stamp set and I use these two little dot ones here, this one, this one, and this one, to put those on, and the uh, thanks a bunch one here, and then I used the bird banter stamp set as well, with these two, to create my card. So I'm just gonna show you very quickly how I did it need your base of your card, so it's your A4 piece of cardstock folded in half, because I cut in half and folded in half to make your A6 tent fold card. And then all I did was use the Stamper Artist, and this piece of cardstock here is 10 centimetres by 14.2 centimetres, so it is 0.5 centimetres less than your A6 cardstock. And I've already gone and put all of my stamps onto here. The way I did that was I put them all onto the piece of paper exactly where I wanted them, that way round, and then I just, oh, that one is not sticking at all. I need some alcohol on it. Um, so I put them all on the paper like that, exactly where I wanted them. Then I folded the fold down of the Stamper Artist and picked them all up so they're all in the right, the right order. I'm just going to come in now with my Versamark. I'm just going to ink all of those up, making sure that they are all inked so that I can get my embossing powder on. Oh, that one does not want to play, does it? I think the problem is, is I was going to film this video yesterday. So I had set my Stamparatus up ready for it yesterday. So these stamps have just sat on here since yesterday, right by the radiator. So they've obviously been a bit temperamental. Come in with your embossing buddy. And just run it over the piece of card you're going to stamp. Get rid of the static. And there we go. Stamp it down. Okay, I'm just going to take the piece of cardstock off here, making sure you keep the magnets away from each other. Put that to the side because I'll want it again. I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper and my clear embossing powder. Okay, just drop the embossing powder straight over where you've just put your verse mark. You won't really see what you're doing, but that's okay. Trust it. Okay, and I don't know whether you can see, it's not overly clear but there is a bit of an imprint in there from where the powder is okay and then if you've got your volume on just turn it down a bit because I'm going to be using my heat tool Once you've done that, that will just shine clearly on the paper. So I'm going to bring my stamp artist back in. 
and this time that was the way I did it before and this part here has got the flowers on so I'm just going to turn it completely over so the flowers are now up here put my magnets back on now you've got to be careful because the paper will have warped a little bit under the heat but that's fine it'll go back straight he's back up again you're just doing the exact same technique again on the back to get rid of the loose bits. And I'm just going to come back in with my heat tool again to set the other side. from where I'm sitting looking in the light there is I don't know if you can honestly see on there at all but there is a little gap just here between where I have heat embossed so I'm just going to take some of the smaller stamps off my Stamparatus so which one will I use I'm going to use that one that one that one and that one I think four little ones just to fill that gap up so with that I'm just place them down again like you would with your Stamparatus same idea because these are clear mounts so it will work the same way line them up where you want them and I want them like that I think There we go. First and mark them up. Oh, that's the one I was having trouble with on the block, isn't it? I'll keep that off and do that on a separate block so I know where it's going. And that's where I want that, just there. And then I'm just going to come in separately with that one. Pop it in the gap. It's tricky. You do have to play quite blind and you have to make sure that you've got your light in the right place so that you can just about see where you've stamped and where you've put your embossing powder. It can be a bit tricky to make sure you've got everywhere but don't worry you'll see it when you start adding the colour. I'm just going to come back in with my heat tool again. Okay so that's all the embossing done I'm just going to put my lid on the embossing powder and top this back in otherwise I will have the worst thing that can happen it's worse than playing with glitter is when your embossing powder gets loose in your craft room over everything I'll pre-warn you it's not easy to vacuum out of carpets or get out of spaces it's really not okay. so I don't know if you can see that at all but you'll start to notice it when I add some color in so just get some scrap paper and you want to get your inks now the inks that I used was this was flirty flamingo there we go you want to apply it from the corner inwards so just keep rubbing in 
And as it goes over the bits that's been embossed, you'll notice that it doesn't stick to the embossed sections. So just keep going. Start at the corner and work your way in and it will give you a darkened edge and it will nicely colour the rest of the paper. Okay. It's best to work in a circular motion with this. And if you can see that really highlights then where you've embossed. So after the Fleur de Flamingo, I'm coming in with Peekaboo Peach. And again, my dauber. And I'm going to do exactly the same, starting off on the outside and working my way in. These daubers can hold quite a bit of ink for some time, so even when you think there's no ink left, just keep going and it'll come it'll come out. There we go. Just gonna put a little bit more around the edges so that I've got that darkness around there as well. Okay, the next colour I used was Wild Wasabi. Dauber again. I'm going to do exactly the same, working from the outside in. Actually, I don't think I used Wild Wasabi last time, looking at the two colours. I think I used Lemon and Lime Twist. But I'm using Wild Wasabi this time because that's what I've started with. I'm going to miss this colour. This colour's leaving us. I'm not sad about any of the other colours. I quite like them, but I'm not that keen on the Wild... Sorry, I love Wild Wasabi. So I'm, I'm quite upset it's going. In fact, it's not going. I'm keeping this pad. That's why it's still out. I've got rid of all my other retired stuff, but this one I'm keeping. Okay, just keep working it back in because I want this to be darker. Okay. And the next one that I used was Wisteria Wonder. Okay, come from the edge again. I'm actually starting in the middle of this bit so that I get a bit of that texture on the, the middle of the Wisteria Wonder. It's a little bit delicate, more delicate than the other colours. So I'm just going to darken that up. You see my previous card was quite pastely. That's just a little bit darker. If you want to do it pastel again, the best thing to do with your dauber is when you put it in the ink, Rub it on the piece of paper first to get the dark dark off and then go. But for film, this was a little bit light, you couldn't really see it, but hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Then all I'm going to do with it is I'm going to stick it to my card base. So I'm going to come in with my snail. one and three quarter inch punch and the starburst punch so for the starburst punch you want to use now where have I put them there they are myths and magic glimmer sweet 
the white glimmer. I'm going to miss this. I've used the Glimmer Sweets so much. So if you want these Glimmer Papers, get stocking up on them. And then with the Scrap Whisper White, which I actually think was the bigger Whisper White for my card, but it doesn't matter. Make do. Where's my stamp set? Um, which one did I have? I put thanks a bunch on, so I'm going to do that again. in Wisteria Wonder. I'm going to keep this one in Wisteria Wonder as well. I was going to do this as a time-lapse card and I started doing one as a time-lapse card but it wasn't very clear to explain how I was using the Stamparatus or the heat tool for a time-lapse card so <laughs> it didn't stay as one. Now one of the best things to get this stuck onto here is either your fuse or a glue dot. So I'm just going to, bear with me two seconds, I've left my fuse the other side of my room. The desk that I actually craft at is behind the desk I film at, purely because this is the only space I've got with to film, but it's not very much space to craft and design and get everything out. So I film, I craft behind me, but I can't film there. There's nowhere to balance the tripod. Right, so just going to stick that on there with a dimensional to pop it up. I'm going to put two because it's a bit of a, a fat circle. Like that. Tie yourself a bow in the organza ribbon. came in with just a couple of the small pearls and I just pop them in the middle of some of the flowers so just pop them in the middle of that one and that one just to give it a 3d effect I need to do it on a couple of them In. And that is how you do the embossed resist technique. Just like that. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.